it's Megan and Rachel and we are here to do the highly anticipated and requested Disney planning tips video we even have a whole document with tips that me and our whole family have contributed to so this is the most comprehensive <laughs> tip video that we could possibly do we thought of everything <laughs> and um so you're in for a treat and you're also in for a long one so definitely get your pens and pencils <laughs> right. so get snacks get snacks get a whole meal because you're gonna be here for a while so um basically we went to disney at the very beginning of 2019 and throughout our trip we just thought of a lot of things that we didn't think about before going or we didn't hear about from other people before going that we think would be helpful to pass on to you guys who are planning trips to Disney in this year or in the coming years because we're definitely going to want to remember these ourselves for any future Disney tips and Rachel is just a wonderful co-host so she agreed to be part of this <laughs> and we're both wearing our Disney shirts I don't know how much you can see because yeah. we can barely fit into the screen but Rachel has her Disneyland um, yeah. sweatshirt and I have a um, Walt Disney World spirit jersey on so we're all Disney so the very first thing I have to say is you need to plan this trip very thoroughly in advance like unless you go to Disney so often that you can just like do whatever you want like wing it. <laughs> and wing it like if you go like once every few years or even once every year like you need to plan it really thoroughly because you're just gonna waste time at the park if you don't plan in advance so like you spend so much money to get there you don't want to waste your money exactly like just walking around we saw so many lines for rides that were like lesser like not the main rides but they were still like two hour waits or at least one hour waits and to us like we don't want to wait around like i'm very impatient so i just want to like go on the ride like get it over with kind of like experience it but then move on to the next thing because I just want to experience as much as possible so I would really suggest planning what days you're going to go to the park based on extra magic hours if you're staying at a Disney resort so we stayed on Disney property so that changes how we view our trip and I don't really have tips on how to get the cheapest hotel room or the cheapest days like we went when we had availability for the four of us and we just paid the price that it was and then we chose I have a whole video on how we decided our resort and stuff so I'll link those videos below um, but we stayed at Port Orleans Riverside Resort and so I would say if you're staying on property and you have your dates set decide what park to go to each day based on the extra magic hours like we had um, two extra hours at Epcot on the first day that we went and then I don't think the other days had any extra magic hours because sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't and we were only at the parks for three days so we went to Epcot, Animal Kingdom, and Magic Kingdom um, just for your reference and we have vlogs for all of those if you want to check it out because <laughs> they're really fun to um, watch back even just for us. Okay so after you decide what parks to go to for each day then you can make your dining reservations and if you're staying on property you can make your dining reservations up to 180 days in advance of your first Sorry. day <laughs> <laughs> the tribe is so close to us we're like ah! yeah, I it. Sorry. <laughs> so, sorry if that happens throughout the video um but you can make your dining reservations 180 days before your first day of your trip and you can make the reservations for your entire trip on that 180 day mark we plan our trip like less than 180 days before our first day so i could go in right after we made our reservation like paid for the trip and i can make our dining reservations um then and then um 60 days in advance you can make your fast pass reservations if you're staying on property if you're staying off property you can make fast pass reservations 30 days in advance so if you download the my disney experience app which you have to like that is the easiest way to do all of this stuff like you could call and make reservations but like who has time for that um get the my disney experience app go to mydisneyexperience.com and you can do all of these reservations that way 
and it just makes it easy also throughout your trip like we would suggest every person in your party downloading the app because like mm -hmm. you could see what was going on and like our yeah. parents could see what was like happening it was nice since you did all the reservations like some of us didn't know yeah i knew everything they but they didn't <laughs> So it was nice to be like, oh, we have something at 6 p.m. So we need to do stuff up until like 5.30 mm -hmm. so then we can walk over to do that. So yeah, it was helpful to have it on your phone. Yeah, especially when like usually in most people's cases, I feel like one person plans the majority of the trip and the rest of the people are going to show, show up. <laughs> No, I loved planning it. Like I, this, I had so many spreadsheets. Like this was my like element. Like I just loved it so much. It's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding. And then everyone has such a great time and is able. Like we plan the specific things we wanted to do, like dining and fast passes. But other than that, we could just do whatever we wanted, and that I think is like the best of both worlds. So. Um, I was just gonna say, yeah. kind of with the app, I know a lot of people will go with like their entire family, oh so like 20 people. Yeah. And so I think having the app would be even more helpful because you don't know if other people are making plans that you don't even know about. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, you have to come to this thing and you don't even know it. Yeah. Or like, because also for the fast passes, you can do it on the app, like mm -hmm. when you're at the park. And then you can select who from your party yeah. you want to do it. So like if you and just like, your kid or whoever mm -hmm. are going to do a ride by yourself you can just do it right from there yeah that is a cool thing with fast pass that you can you don't have to make the same fast pass for everyone in your party mm -hmm. so like our mom doesn't like some of the rides we do so we would just like select ourselves like the three of us and like not have one for mom mm -hmm. and then she could do something else if she wanted to yeah with it so exactly so you definitely like there's so much information out there well my contact just like spazzed out in my eyes so i was like ah. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much information out there about fast passes and like the hacks and stuff and I have a video like touching on some of those but do your research as much as you can before your trip like I was reading all the blogs like watching people's videos to get as much info as possible to make the most of our money and the most of our time so there's people way more experienced than me but th these are just our tips mm. look up which rides you want to do and which of those have the longest wait times mm -hmm. and then get those fast passes yeah. because I would say like we say like flight of passage and like the minecart ride like mm -hmm. those are really good rides and they have the longest waits but if you don't want to do them don't get the don't fast waste. pass yeah and then just do other rides that you want to do that have really long waits because like some of them, or not some of them, most of them had over an hour long wait mm -hmm. for just standing in line. So, and then the ride of, is like five minutes, yeah, if that, yeah. <laughs> so, it's kind of disappointing, yeah. Like, <laughs> the one that I like, I loved Frozen Ever After, mm -hmm. but I would never suggest waiting two, three, four hours for that ride because it's literally like three minutes long. Yeah. The ride was so short, like, it's really good, it was so it's good. So like, so don't short. get me wrong. But I would be pissed if I waited yeah. for hours with like a cranky child or like a sleeping mm. kid that I had to hold the whole time. Like, oh my God. I know. Like, and definitely if you're going to wait in line, if you don't have fast passes, be sure to eat and go to the bathroom beforehand. Yeah, because if you have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> you have to get out of line. Which you're not going to do because you wait, like you spent so much time. Yeah. And speaking of bathrooms, we have a few bathroom recommendations and thinking of Frozen Ever After the best bathrooms in Epcot are in Norway at like the frozen area. It is mm -hmm. so like ice cold in there in the bathrooms. There's lots of yeah. stalls. It's really clean. So if you need a bathroom recommendation in Epcot, go to the Norway ones. Mm -hmm. Cause we would like be in another country and then walk over there to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Once Just we discovered nicer. that one, we <laughs> didn't waste our time at other yeah. bathrooms and definitely expect to walk more than you've ever walked in your life. How many steps did we At do? At least 15,000 every day. 15,000 <laughs> steps. That's insane. Like, especially in Epcot, it's so spread out. Yeah. And it's really, really sunny and hot. 
at least when we went and we went in January. January. So I can only imagine like how During the summer. Oh, <laughs> so be sure obviously sunscreen, hats, like fans, those little spray bottles with like a fan that would, would be say, helpful. If you can buy those before your trip cuz they're super expensive in the park even though they're cute. They mm -hmm. have the characters on it. They're yeah. like probably $20 I would yeah. think. Yeah. And you can take water into the parks. Like Disney is yeah. like they don't have to do that, but they allow food and drinks into the park. Which is, like, so unheard of, like, anything nowadays. Yeah. So take advantage so of it. So you could buy a water bottle there, but you could bring in water bottles. Like, we saw families, especially with young kids or, like, older, like, grandparents and stuff, bring in coolers, like, mm -hmm. s that you could um, roll. roll. So you could carry it around the park. Plus, that would be, like, a seat when you're waiting. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> We did not write that tip down. That was on the fly. Oh my god! I just thought about that. Sleep yeah. for a little kid, also. Oh my god! They were so tired. We were so tired. We were like so, <laughs> just like exhausted. And we would definitely say, do Epcot first. Mm. Epcot is the most exhausting day, at least that we experienced. And we did it as our first day, and we're so thankful because. We would have been so tired if we waited for the last day to do Epcot. Yeah. We would have been like, no. We don't go. <laughs> because it's such a great experience, but it's a lot of walking. Like, there's not a lot to do in Epcot other than like, walking and seeing the different countries. Yeah. And, like, I would say part of that is good because then there's less rides. So then you're mm -hmm. less... Like, there's less time waiting in yeah. line. It's just more walking. <laughs> yes. All the time you would have spent waiting in line is walking. <laughs> yeah, because it's really all spread out. Because mm -hmm. there's, like, a giant lake in the middle. <laughs> I wish they didn't have that. It kind of makes it rough. Yeah. The release, they could have, like, pathways. I oh, wish, like, yeah, they have so walkways. Because cool. if you're trying to get to, like, Japan, is mm -hmm. literally on the opposite side. So of you entrance. have to either go one side or the other and go all the way to the middle. Mm -hmm. And we would say for all parks but like I think especially well I guess all parks um always look at the map but like there's always time, yeah. so many maps either at your resort or like at the front of the park and look at that map and plan out where you want to go like circle things like yeah. just do something take a picture of it and like draw on your phone with the yeah. um like pencil so it helps you know like where to go and I planned our fast passes based on where the rides were so if rides were near each other I tried to do them like one after another um, because with a fast pass reservation you have an hour window to ride that ride and then you can go on to the next one so I have a whole video about fast passes so I don't want to get like too deep into it but just map it out with the maps provided. You can also probably look it up online. I'm sure they're all I just didn't get that intense to do it <laughs> like that specifically beforehand, but you can yeah. like get as specific as you want. Yeah. Cause if you have like fast passes that are one hour apart, but they're on opposite sides of the park, Ugh. like you can- You're gonna like get there, yeah, but- Yeah, you can get there, but then it's like, you're missing out on the stuff along the way. So then on your way back, you have to do all that. Plus then, whatever else you were gonna do yeah. so like it would just kind of be a waste of you time. have to plan smart at Disney because there's so much to do and especially if you're only at each park for one day like you need to make sure you're seeing everything you want to see like we've never had the luxury of going for like a week or two mm -hmm. like some people go for a really long time which is amazing and, and I want to experience that <laughs> one day yeah. but like if you're going for a short amount of time, you need to plan very intelligently and thoroughly. Yeah, because I would say for all of the parks, there was stuff that we didn't do. Like, you're not going to be able to do everything in one day. And, like, don't so. be upset about what you miss. Like, just enjoy what you get to experience because everything at Disney is magical. Like, yeah. you're... Even if you only get to do, like, a fourth of the things you wanted to do, it's still going to be, like, amazing and you're going to have a great time. Mm -hmm. So, it's just a fun fun place to go. Um, one thing we wanted to mention are these cups that you get at your resort. Like it comes with the dining plan if you do the dining plan. And you can buy them I think for like $13. Oh or really? Uh, well it. don't do that. <laughs> but um, if you get it for free or if you buy it if you want to, these are only good at the resorts. Like we carried them around the first day at the park and 
there was no place to fill them up. Yeah. Like, and like when we asked them, they were like, oh, you can only fill it with water. You can't get soda. You sh you're supposed to get like coffee, soda, water, whatever you want. Like mostly I wanted water, but it wasn't worth it to carry around at the park. So we just didn't do it because, after that first day. Like what I would say is it's a really odd shape mm -hmm. because it's like, <laughs> it's so hard to explain. It's so annoying. But like the lid is like one of these slidey things. Mm -hmm. So you can't put in your bag full of water because it's going to spill. Uh -huh. And it's also like a weird shape because it has the handle, which is nice to hold it. I wish it had a but, clip. Yeah, we were saying if you could like clip it, that would be uh -huh. really nice. But like, since you can only fill it up with water anyways, just bring a sealable water bottle because yeah. you can just throw that in your bag and not worry about it. Yeah. Because that's more hassle than it's worth. Yeah, especially since you can just bring in your own water bottles, like just do that. Yeah. So, and we would just like recycle the water bottles as we use them. So our bag got less and less heavy. And we would definitely say at least one person in your group bring either a backpack or a large like tote bag with like water, sunscreen, like an extra space to put like anything you buy or if you're wearing layers because it gets cold at night at least yeah. when we went in the winter like it's hot during the day but sometimes you want a like jacket or like a little sweatshirt or something at night so put all that in the one person's bag backpacks are amazing because yeah. then it's like Distrib distributed properly um and i would say that and this is something we did this time that we've never done before is anything you buy in the parks you can ship home or you can send to your resort or you can send to the front of the park so say you buy like our mom got a lot of ornaments and so did we mm -hmm. but we weren't going to carry those around all day and we're very clumsy so we would have probably broken them plus even you may not have space in your suitcase yes so you can send it ship it home like it does cost like whatever the shipping cost is but if it's in your budget to do that we highly recommend it because also one of the items that we bought was broken when we got it but they have insurance on the items so they send you a new item of the exact same thing for free yeah. so if it does break it's okay <laughs> it's like not on you because if it breaks in your suitcase they're not gonna replace yeah. it they're gonna be like oh sorry it's too bad but yeah. like since they send it mm -hmm. it's like an it's, insurance yes. essentially that's a great point point. and like if you send the stuff to your resort like be sure you check with them before you leave because some of our stuff was not delivered by the time they said it would be to the resort so they had we had to fill out all this paperwork and then they had to ship that home mm -hmm. to us like for free they waived the charge yeah. but like be sure that you're on top of what you got of what you got you have to remember what you got yeah. they give you receipts but it's like if you lose that or like you just misplace it in your purse like you don't remember everything you buy sometimes because mm -hmm. there's so many little stores so you yeah. may buy one item from like 10 stores so like one of the stores you may just forget you even bought anything exactly. from exactly so definitely keep track of stuff like maybe take pictures of it as you buy it throughout like your trip those, like little like folder things that people put like their coupons in. oh like, yeah the if you're really organized <laughs> put it in that they're like yellow receipts so they kind of stand out yeah. but still and then another option for if you don't want to carry your stuff around like the stuff you buy all day you can send your purchases to the front of each park so say you buy stuff in epcot and there's so many different places to buy it you can send it all to guest related relations in the front of the park and then whenever you're leaving the park you can pick it up but if you're staying at the park all day until close be prepared for that line to be really long because all these other people did the same thing mm -hmm. but it's definitely worth it if you're not staying on property but you don't want to carry around the stuff all day like that's a great option and you made a great point yesterday about people that might leave like halfway through the day yeah i was watching videos before we left <laughs> But a lot of them were about, like, for parents traveling with little kids. And something that I didn't think about was that, like, when you have little kids, they're going to want to nap throughout the day. So, like, this lady was... We wanted to nap throughout yeah. the day. <laughs> <laughs> but this lady was saying, like, oh, like, her tip, which I also thought was smart for you guys, is if you have little kids, um, like, when you leave during the day for them to take a nap, you can go to your... Uh, resort to have like a meal as a mm. reservation because usually since most people are at the park there's gonna be a lot less people there so tip. there's gonna be like no line so that's a tip but one thing I was thinking of is if you're leaving halfway through the day because your kid needs to take a nap or whatever then you could go to the guest relations to get the stuff then because I doubt there would be that long yeah line. definitely if you're leaving the park at like an odd time 
that would be ideal to pick up your stuff mm -hmm. from the front. So yeah. there's a few different options about that or you can carry it around or something we definitely suggest is like if you can help it don't do the shops in the front of the park first. Do it last, like mm -hmm. in- On your way out. <laughs> yeah, at Main Street in Magic Kingdom, do all those shops last. Like, they're trying to entice you when you come in, but one, we had a breakfast reservation at Be Our Guest, so we were like <laughs> beelining there, um, so we couldn't shop even if we wanted to. And um, like, everyone's in the front, and then you potentially would have to carry around that stuff all day. So we would suggest going to those shops last, like As you're planning leaving. that out, like saving some time for that if you want to do it. Um, but then you wouldn't have to ship, like you wouldn't have to send it yeah, to your resort. You're just you carrying just it on take your way it. out. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause I saw at some of like, what was that place? In Epcot where it was like the biggest Disney merchandise store. Oh, was. that's Disney Springs. No, no, no. But there was one in Epcot where it was mm -hmm. like the mouse gear. Or whatever. Oh yeah. The mouse yeah. gears. Mm-hmm. So, like, there they had a bunch of, like, really big toy sets <laughs> for little kids. You're not going to carry that around all so day. So, I'm like, you're not going to want to carry that. So, it's, like, either ship it home, ship it to your resort, or, like, if you're not staying on property, that's when you'd have to ship it or send it to the front of the resort and then pick it up. Because, yeah. like, like, it's good they have those options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it would be impossible to carry that That would be insane. Day. Yeah. So, if you have, like, bigger sized items either wait till the end of the day or send it to the front or your resort or whatever mm -hmm. um okay what else <laughs> we're still collect only on the first page. let's collect ourselves <laughs> okay so we did want to mention these little buttons so you can get these at either the ticket counter if you're buying like a ticket um for that day or you can get them at guest relations and just say like oh can we get a button for like whatever like if you're celebrating your birthday anniversary like wedding whatever and we just got celebrating and then they wrote 2019 on it yeah because i was gonna say they have different buttons like if it's your birthday if it's a wedding that so you're cool. celebrating mm -hmm. so like it's definitely cool and I know, at least for when we went over your birthday at Disneyland a few years ago, when cast members would see the pin, they would be like, oh, happy birthday, Megan. It was amazing. So, like, I would highly recommend, even if you're lying, <laughs> <laughs> like, just get one that says something, because they'll, like, it'll just make it even more, like, personal and magical. Like, we weren't lying. We were there on my for, birthday. But, yeah, and for this, it was yeah. 2019? Yeah, we went on the first of the year. We went yeah. on January 1st and got this. Yeah. But we would say that they write it in Sharpie and this can be rubbed off with sunscreen. So be careful of where you put this, yes. like where you wear it, because Rachel and Moms both got completely rubbed away, like the 2019 got rubbed away. Yeah. So. Because it was like we had it. <laughs> Instead of putting on, like, our shirt or something, we put it on our bag. And it's just, like, as you're moving around yeah. and moving your bag, your arm just, like, rubs on the bag. Mm -hmm. So it rubbed off the ink. So yeah. that kind of stuff. Our sunscreen made things a little bit difficult. Like, I, <laughs> I brought some sunscreen that just didn't react very well. Like, it was very sticky, so my legs would be covered in dirt. Like, it was just <laughs> wear sunscreen that isn't sticky, something that rubs in really well. Yeah. Um, something we wanted to mention about the Magic Kingdom fireworks. So we saw the Happily Ever After ones, and I think that they're phasing them out, so I don't think oh, okay. they'll be there when we go next time, but that had, like, effects on the castle, and I'm assuming they're gonna keep that up, because it was such a cool was really effect, cool. even yeah. if they change it, um, but if you don't really care about seeing, like, the actual fireworks, but you want to see those effects on the castle, we found this amazing place to stand, like, right when you exit Liberty Square, Square. and it's before you go on this little bridge. And it's like kind of across from the Christmas store. Yeah, and it's by like this waffle stand. Mm -hmm. So if that helps you at all. Um, it's like, cause there's like a little bit of water. Yeah, that you can stand in front of and you're not on the bridge. Like you can't yeah. stand on the bridge. They yeah. like shush everyone away. Um, but you can stand like right next to these like chairs and it's like a perfect view of the side of the castle. So it's not the front of the castle, but it's the side of the castle. And you can see all the effects on it because these projections look so real. Like it looks through, really like three cool. D. It's crazy, but you cannot see the fireworks. There's trees. Blocking, There's trees. So. so we were like, oh, like, but <laughs> it's fine because yeah. we had dinner at Narcuzzi's the next night, and we could see the fireworks across oh, the water. And I would say, mm -hmm. kind of with those fireworks, if you really just want to see the fireworks and you don't care about the mm -hmm. special effects, the fireworks go off behind the castle, so you could wait 
pretty much I feel like anywhere that's behind the castle and get a good view of the fireworks then. If you, yeah, if you don't care about seeing the castle, yeah, like, and the effect. special effects, like, because I'm sure, like, that stuff is open. Because I remember one time when Mom and I went by ourselves, mm -hmm. we didn't care about seeing the fireworks, so we actually then went on rides at that That's point. smart, because, like, no one's <laughs> on no rides. One, everyone wants to see the fireworks, so the lines are really short mm -hmm. then. But it was funny because we were walking around the park and we could see the fireworks. Like that's we were in cool. Tomorrowland, I think, and we could. Because it's like the farther you are, the better the view. Yeah. And that's why like Main Street is really nice to see the fireworks. But you can't like on Main Street they project the same castle projections on the street, the like buildings. buildings. But it's just really cool to see it on the buildings, and I got some amazing pictures. Mm -hmm. So and, like, um, it depends on what you care about the most. Exactly, and like for Main Street, that's where everyone goes. Mm -hmm. and oh. So it's like so, sardines it's so crowded so yeah. that's like another thing if you're claustrophobic <laughs> like me i don't or, like it there like if you want to get a good spot you're gonna have to wait hours just sitting in front of the castle. and i do want to mention that they start roping off areas like an hour like an hour and a half to two hours before the fireworks start they start mm -hmm. roping off stuff you can't like walk around the perimeter of the castle you have to find like this one like section mm -hmm. where you can walk through like it's kind of insane like they don't yeah. communicate it very well and it yeah. it kind of like makes me panicky like are we even gonna see the fireworks because you don't know where to walk but like you'll find a way i i assure you yeah. but it does seem weird how early they block it off and yeah, how definitely. they make it difficult to like maneuver around that area yeah. rachel was talking about going to rides during the fireworks as a great time to skip like a lot of lines without fast passes and another tip that we personally didn't do because we're not morning people but you can do if you want to is to go at rope drop which means like the opening of the park like mm -hmm. i don't think there's an actual rope like that's like the old-fashioned thing they probably did have a rope yeah. but now it's just like they opened the floodgates <laughs> for you to enter the parks but if you don't get fast passes for like those highly sought after rides like Flight of Passage, Frozen Ever After, um, the Seven Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you can get to the park at the opening and like run straight to those yeah. rides and it'll be the shortest wait all day. So mm -hmm. that wasn't a factor for us because we were like, we don't want to get up yeah. early. So I planned very like smartly to get the rides we wanted to. But if you didn't get them and you don't mind waking up early, like rope drop is a great time to not wait in super long lines. Yeah. Two things I would add to that. One is don't, I would say like, Definitely try to do it, but like how we said we were too tired to do it, like going to Listen Disney Listen to your body, thing. yeah. So like if you want to sleep, sleep. <laughs> because the thing is when we would get back to our resort, it would be like 11 p.m. midnight. So like to wake up at like 7 a.m. to get there. Because we woke up at like 8, 8 or 9. Like we probably left our room by 9 every morning and yeah. that was sleeping in compared to like other people. Exactly. Ugh. So like definitely try to do it, but you may still be too tired to do it. But I will say like for people with little kids little kids get up early anyways so that might be perfect <laughs> and then you could take a break in the middle of the day exactly. like at the peak time yeah so that could be a good choice mm -hmm. for someone who has little kids to get up early or if you just get up early anyways yeah because like i probably would have been able to get up a little earlier on our trip but like rachel said it's such an exhausting trip like i I want to go for a lot of days in a row, but I almost don't because be so three tired. full days was like enough. Like, yeah. I don't think I could have done an, another full day directly after our third day. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would say, if you have the like flexibility in your schedule, plan a relaxation day. We did our relaxation day as our last day before our traveling back home. And we just went to Disney Springs and then we had dinner um at a different resort at Narcoozie's at um, Grand Floridian, which if you can go to Grand Floridian, like just to walk around. Cause you can just get in. It's <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah, like like you, it's like a different universe. Yeah, like it's really nice. And like, like they will check your bags. Cause yeah, it's like high security. It's high security, but it's really nice. Like I would say it's a yeah. nice place to just take photos. <laughs> yeah, cause to. we went when it was all like the Christmas decorations and it was just so pretty. Mm -hmm. I still want to see the Polynesian. I'm sad we didn't have time to do that. Yeah. But again, too exhausted. So yeah. there's some things you won't get to see, but hopefully you'll be able to get back 
there one day mm -hmm. um and then i would definitely say if you're staying on property take advantage of the buses that go to the parks each day and like they do it throughout the day so it's not like you have to go first thing in the morning but plan that travel time into your schedule for the day so mm -hmm. like we had a breakfast reservation at be our guest at like 10 something and it was our last day so we were super super tired um so it was kind of like a slow start to the morning but you have to factor in like at least 20 to 30 minutes like of the bus ride and then getting through security so you have to think about all these mm -hmm. additional factors that isn't just like oh well i can wake up at 8 a.m like think about how long does it take you to get ready how long does it take on the bus how long does it take through security you also have to wait for the bus so and you have to wait for the there bus there were some yeah. cases where you waited 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. so if you were planning to get it right away yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah sometimes it's full sometimes it doesn't show up when it says that it will mm -hmm. and definitely be prepared to stand on the bus like they don't the bus is not full until like it's full of standing people like it's not the easiest thing especially if you're older have kids or whatever but or exhausted, or exhausted but you'll stand there <laughs> half awake to just to get to the park but um definitely the buses work but another cool transportation option is the mini van so this is through lyft they have like some sort of like collaboration with them and these specific vehicles look like mini mouse with the polka dots and stuff it's really really cute and it's definitely a higher price point like a normal lift let's say is ten dollars a minivan for the same travel time is 30 yeah, so it's three times the amount it's all through the lift app so you mm -hmm. can see the comparison yeah. it usually was three times more. yeah but but we would say like it's definitely worth it for like the safety of it and like the driver knows the property of disney really really well because they're disney employees so if you've never done like a ride share through uber or lyft the minivan is a great way to experience it and to get more insight about disney like you can ask them any question you want like it's yeah. really cool to have that extra experience with a disney like expert um and we just had a great time and one day when we were at um disney springs it started to storm and the way we were going to get back to our resort was on a boat and the boat wasn't running anymore so my dad who's normally like a cheapskate was like megan like get one of those minivan things and it was such a fun experience and just made what could have been like a downer part of the day like actually really fun and enjoyable and they dropped us like right off in front of our basically our room yeah. like the building and the bus would never have been able to get that close to our room so yeah. and also i know cool. for the minivans i think they have like two car seats that they can put in oh, yeah. so if you have kids that could also be a good option because i don't know if normal point. lifts would have i know seat. you might have to choose that and it might be like an upcharge maybe yeah. so, so especially if you have kids that's a good idea okay and the last thing i really want to stress and we didn't put this near the front of the video because not everyone does the Disney dining plan, but if you do, these are like really good tips that we wish we would have thought of before. So we just did like the middle dining plan where you got like, I don't even know what the breakdown was, but it was like the medium plan. So with any of the plans, you get way more snack credits than you will ever need. So don't like like not use them and then you'll have so many left at the end of the trip like we kind of tiptoed around using them because we were like oh we don't want to waste them yeah, and we can like, <sighs> share a thing like no j if you want a water bottle use a snack credit like if you want a cotton candy like use a snack credit don't wait around and stuff like it's I wish we wouldn't have done that but we did and now we've learned from that mistake because I, what I would say then is then to use up your snack credits, you go to your resort and they have like little bags of candy and stuff that you can buy, which are fine. And nuts. Mom and nuts. loved the nuts. She really liked the nuts. But I would say those are nowhere near as good as the snacks that you can get in the park. Yeah. Like they're way better. Mm -hmm. And like, cause for the one candy that I got, I threw it out cause it yeah. didn't even taste good. <laughs> so don't like waste your snack credits at the end of the trip. So I would really recommend like depending on how many snack credits you have and you can see that number in the My Disney Experience app, divide that number by the number of days that you're going to be at the parks or the resort and see how many you should use per day. So then you're not like using zero one day and having to use like 20 on your yeah. last day. So and another thing that we noticed is snacks 
what you might think is a snack might not be a snack credit. So there were some places that I had looked up online, like best snacks in Disney, and I was so excited to try all these things. Like the tater tots. Tater tots, like that was what I was thinking, and it makes me so sad we didn't get to try them. <laughs> Those are not a snack credit. Like they are a snack, but it's not a snack credit. So you have to look on the menus at all these places for this little symbol that tells you what is a snack credit because it could be like a snack, but it's not a snack credit. So then you have to pay with money and we didn't want to do that because we paid for the dining plan. Yeah, it's like we already paid for it essentially. Yeah. So you don't want to spend more money. So we kind of missed out on some things we wanted to try just because like we thought they were a snack credit, but they weren't. And then um, the snacks in Animal Kingdom are the best real food options for snacks. Like they had fried rice, like wontons, like dumplings. They had, what we got was um, a meatball with polenta. That was super good. I spilled it on myself. There's a really hilarious story. <laughs> and I said the quote, this is the worst thing that could have possibly happened. With a completely straight yeah. deadpan, I'm gonna so kill you, man. And she was like angrily wiping the shirt. Oh, that's so ridiculous. So, hard not to laugh. so ridiculous. <laughs> um, but they Animal Kingdom has the best real food snacks. Like we did that instead of getting a meal for lunch. So most of the other parks, like at Epcot and Magic Kingdom at least, their snacks are mostly just like junk food, like sweets. Sweet. Sometimes but, pretzels. Yes. And I would say Epcot has really good snacks if you're looking yes. for sweets. High quality. Because mm -hmm. it's like, we really liked at Paris, they have a bakery that you can get, a bunch yeah. of stuff, like even just like bread you can get. And then at Norway, we also got those like pretzel oh, things yeah. that were really good. If you want like baked goods, you should definitely use them in Epcot. And then Magic Kingdom, you can get like Starbucks with it or mm -hmm. like Dole Whip is actually a snack credit. There's another crazy <laughs> Megan story with that that I won't go into, but the long story, or the short story of that long story is do not buy Dole Whip unless you're eating it right away because I bought Dole Whips for our family. I could not find them. I'm walking all around the park with the these. They're melting all over me as my soul is melting and my mood is melting and I'm so mad and I'm covered in Dole Whip. <laughs> not a fun experience, but Dole Whip is amazing. I'm just reimagining the Dole Whip <laughs> all over me and me being so mad. Oh my god. So sad. I wish I was. <laughs> I would have like screamed at you. I would have been like, I know. You would have like <laughs> smashed my camera. I was in rare form. Um, but anyway, if you are ready to eat Dole Whip and you don't want to wait in line because the lines for Dole Whip are insane because there's only like two places in the whole park to Which get Dole Whip. Like for the most delicious thing that you could get at Met, like um, Disney in general, mm -hmm. it should be everywhere. Um, but you can order Dole Whip ahead on the My Disney Experience app and then you bypass the whole line. Like literally it's pretty freaking amazing and we didn't utilize that other than the time when I had my meltdown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but don't let meltdown literally. <laughs> Um, but it would have been useful at other times, like when we had lunch the one day. Yeah, like at peak lunch times. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth it to check and just yeah. see. See if that quick service does the yeah. order ahead. Because not all of them do, but some mm -hmm. of them do. So yeah. It could be worth and it, it. it helps save you time, and you guys know I hate waiting in line, so anytime I can order ahead, <laughs> I want to do it, but... You yeah. just kind of forget about it, I guess, as you're going throughout the day. Yeah. But, like, take this as your reminder and try to order ahead if you can. Yeah. Because I would also say it's really hard to find seats when yes. you're in those places because everyone is sitting there. Yeah, so definitely, could, like, like, have one person. Yeah. Ooh, or order from your table. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is, like, as you're trying to find a table, order from your phone. Find a table and have someone sit there and go mm -hmm. up and pick up your food. And I would like also say, like, the one thing with the Dole Whip story is that we divided. Mm. Like, never divide from your family or your group. At least not super far away, because I will mm -hmm. say, and part of the reason why I was upset with Megan, is she literally went to the opposite side of the park to get the Dole Whip. Without, like, telling anyone. <laughs> you just went. And then you were like, where are you? 
That was so bad. <laughs> so like that was oh. the problem. It was too far. So like if you're in, like all of them are kind of broken up into sections. So there's like Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, Adventureland. Like or like with Epcot, it's the countries, the and countries. with um, Animal Kingdom, it's like the continents. continents. So I'd say if you're doing like in the same area, that's okay. But she literally, we were in Fantasyland, and she went to like Adventureland, <laughs> which, which is, is really far. far. <laughs> Because so. I was on a mission, like, I had, like, these crazy eyes, like, oh my god, you guys, I hope none of you saw me during that, that's always my fear of being, like, seen out in public while I'm crazy, because sometimes I get really crazy. Well, I just feel bad for any parents and kids that heard you, like, curse. I was trying to be quiet! Like, like you fucking guys, <laughs> where are you? Yes, I was really, really stressed and angry yes. and covered in dolt. Dol <laughs> so, yeah, I would just say try to stick kind of close to Yes, you. I would definitely suggest that as well. You're, you're going to have way more snacks than meals, which really sucks. Like snack wish, credits than yeah. meal credits. Yeah, so I wish that they would change that, mm -hmm. but that's just the way it is. So one thing that they, like, have posted is that you can exchange one quick service meal for three snack credits, and I would say... <laughs> Don't do that! <laughs> like, literally, we had way too many snacks at the end of it. And, and not enough quick service. Like, we yeah. needed basically, like, four extra quick services to have us feel like we had exactly how many we needed. Exactly. And what sucks is you can't go three snack credits to one quick service. They should we do that. that. They should that. would have been amazing, but you can't. But, so I would say, like, if you're out of snack credits, but you have, like, one set of quick service left, just buy one snack, mm -hmm. like, with real money. <laughs> instead if of you need it. Yeah, if you need it, which you probably won't. But if you yeah. do, instead of exchanging Don't quick exchange service. quick service for snacks. Like, I cannot imagine anyone benefiting Any from that. Yeah. Like, it's way more worth it to have quick service than extra snacks because you already have so many snacks. Yeah. The only reason that the Dole Whip incident happened is because I was so focused on using our snacks instead of wasting our last quick service credits for like the four of us. So instead of just using the credits or paying with money, like I drove us all crazy trying to use the snacks when there wasn't real food options and so we just got like all these dumb snacks that just gave us sugar spikes and crashes. And plus also a lot of the snacks are really spread out and mm -hmm. that was kind of the problem with the Dole Whip is we were getting snacks at Gaston's whatever it's called. Peru <laughs> or Peru. something like that. Something like that. And so like, we got snacks there and then Megan was going to get the Dole Whip but it was too far away mm -hmm. and like yeah. we were trying to use up the snack credits because we spent our money on them. Mm -hmm. But it's like... Don't even, like, if you're hungry, just get food. Even if you don't have, like, the right credits or whatever. Like, we should have just bought a meal. A meal. Yeah, quick service. It was just, like... Because, like, we were hungry, mm -hmm. so that made us stressed. And then Megan was stressed because of the dull. I get really, really <laughs> upset. You guys never see it, but... <laughs> she gets really upset. I'm, <laughs> I'm a difficult person a lot of the time. <laughs> so it was hard, like... I don't know. It, it was, was hard all the way around, yeah. and it would have been solved if we just would have got a and quick service bought. meal. Yeah, like, then yeah. we would have been eating Because I think, happy. like, I planned out when I realized, like, how how we didn't have, like, enough quick service. Like, we would have preferred having an extra, like, round of quick service meals. We decided we wanted to just use snacks at Magic Kingdom instead of using a quick service and save the quick service for the next day. We should have just used the quick service and figured it out the next day. Like, if you're, whatever you're feeling in the moment, just do it. Like, you're not going to regret it. You'll figure out a way to make it work. But there's no reason to be hungry and stressed and angry. And we were also saying um, that you probably won't be 100% happy the whole time you're at Disney. Like, it is the happiest place on earth, but it's also, like, the most stressful place on earth, and so you Especially will... Especially if you're like Megan. Yeah, <laughs> if you're really, like, high-strung and, and like, anxious and, then, and stuff. And also, you were really excited to be there, and mm -hmm. you were, like, kind of like, we, I want to do all this stuff yeah. that, like, I want to do. And I don't want to, like, sacrifice anything, so, so <laughs> it can get really intense depending on who you're with. <laughs> go with the flow sometimes 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 <laughs> um but yeah so it's just like you will have a great time but sometimes it gets a little bit stressful <laughs>
<laughs> Angel okay. Halo. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and like that's a situation where it's like just buy the meal or like whatever yeah. it is, like just figure it out. Yeah. And just do it. It's make, worth it. To make it yeah. work in the moment. Because yeah. I think if we just like got more meals at wherever we were, we would have been so much happier. <laughs> and then we wouldn't have split. Because we would have just split. got a meal all together. Exactly. So I think that Learn would from us. <laughs> Don't split up and just eat when you're hungry and yeah. don't just get Dole Whip if you're hungry because it's not gonna help. <laughs> but then the thing is like with the snacks is it, like I think we kind of talked about this er earlier is like if there's something you see that's a snack credit and you want to get it just, just get, get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> just get don't it. Don't wait. There's no point in waiting. Because you have so many snack credits mm -hmm. you'll, you'll need to use them up. Yeah, you're eventually. not wasting them at all. Like, so if you're using them throughout your trip. Because I definitely felt like that. Like, whenever we get stuff, I was like, oh, do I really need it? But it's like... Yeah. Just get it! You've already bought it. Yeah. So just use yeah. it if it's something exactly. that you want to get. Or something you want to try. Like, even if you're not mm -hmm. sure if you'll like it, just Whatever. try it out. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of those things, since you already paid for it, like, you might as well get your money's worth and try different things you might not have tried if you're, like, paying real money, even though you did. It yeah. just doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it feels like fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's all free! Yeah, yeah. Not really. Because I would but. say, I'm sorry, I keep looking back to other stuff, but, like, for the bakery, I feel like we got a bunch of different stuff there, yeah. and then it was fun to try it all, mm -hmm. instead of, like, just getting, like, generic candy from our resort. Yeah. That would have like, been a major bummer. Because yeah. we did see someone like a dad buy like 20 packs of candy on the last day of his trip because they didn't use up their snack credits. Yeah, and like that sucks. Yeah, and nope. they probably threw it all away. Yeah, <laughs> the pro tip that we got from one of the like cashiers who's also like uh, at the resort, she was like, oh yeah, everyone always buys a million snacks on the last day because no one ever uses them all. But she was saying that they can make good gifts. So oh, yeah. if you like have a bunch, like you can throw it in for like a birthday gift or like, like you a can teacher. get a, you can <laughs> get like a prepackaged snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the candy or whatever. Like just to be like, oh, we're at because it has like Disney branding on yeah, it. Yeah, so, so. You'd be like, we're at Disney. We thought of you. We got the snack, but in reality, we did it. <laughs> we just have to use them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like the lady was saying, like she saw parents would give it to like teachers. And that's stuff. cute. So I'm like, that's a good. Especially idea. if your kid's missing school to go to Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buy it for the principal too. <laughs> I think that is all we had to say. This video has been epically long, but hope hopefully very, very helpful to you guys. And even if you don't care about Disney, hopefully you enjoyed us <laughs> chatting together because I feel like a lot of people like to see you in my videos. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this and definitely let us know your Disney tips down below because yeah. we are not Disney experts. We are just a family that went to Disney and we think that we did a pretty good job and learned some good lessons. Yeah. So definitely let us know your tips below as well and you can watch my other Disney videos. I'll link them in a playlist below. But yeah, so thanks so much for hanging out with us today and we'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye!